So um, there are you know different forms of energy that we're capable of detecting right, and responding to and perceiving. Um, and these different forms, um, you know, include, for example, uh, you know, nociception, right? Tissue damage detection. Um, I have a, you know, on the slide, a picture of a hamburger, right? So basically, uh, taste, you know, gust, gustatory information, uh, chemicals that are dissolved in your mouth and, you know, end up on your tongue, uh, taste buds, etc. cetera. Um, also olfaction, right? So smell, like information, you know, chemicals that are volatile, they're in the air, they're small, they tend to get inside the nose, right? They bind to specialized sensory receptors and that information gets transmitted, you know, into the central ne nervous system where ultimately your perceptual experience of the smell will occur. Um, there's also, for example, light, right? And light is actually fascinating. I mean, it's a, it's, it's an electromagnetic radiation, right? Um, and electromagnetic radiation, the whole spectrum, you know, uh, runs the gamut, you know, from gamma rays, you know, up, you know, at the radio waves. I mean, lots and lots of different, you know, wavelengths of energy um, uh, that are, you know, coming towards your body. Um, you know, some will actually, you know, arrive and uh, move the tissue more so they, they can be thermal. You know, they can be like infrared, it can sort of warm you. Um, but there's a narrow range of electromagnetic radiation that enters your eyes and gets uh, absorbed by specialized photoreceptors um, in your retina. And that's a detection event that gets transmitted back into the brain you know, for actual perceptual experiences to occur. So for perception, you need, you know, detection. You need some kind of specialized neuron, right, that responds. Not all, you know, stimulation, even within a particular, you know, category of stimulus, right, like what we call a modality, like light, for example, or sound. Not all uh, examples of light or sound are actually detected, and not to the same degree. So let's take, for example, um, somato sensation, which is sensation from the body, right? Well, you know, you have a lot more sensory receptors in your hands, right, in your face, uh, at the soles of your feet, uh, than you do on your back, for example. So you are far more capable of fine sensory discriminations with your fingers than you are with your elbow, right? Um, and we find that there's a similar you know, exaggerated distribution of, you know, uh, cortical networks that are involved in your perceptual experiences, say, for touch, right, um, devoted in the, in the brain to the fingers than there are, for example, to the small of your back. Um, so this is what we call a homunculus. Homunculus is a little, a little deformed individual that represents, you know, for example, um, in the somatosensory realm, the, uh, you know, exaggerated you know, uh, sensory distribution of the hand, hey, that works pretty well, um, versus like the small of your back. Um, and, but there are homuncul there's a homuncular organization to every sensory perceptual system. So within the auditory system, for example, you can detect sounds of frequencies from, you know, 20 up to 20,000 hertz, at least as a baby, uh, you know, uh, by the time you're my age, you're down to about 14,000 or 15,000 is the upper limit. But we have far more discriminative capacity for frequencies within the range of like maybe, you know, uh, 500 to uh, 5,000, um, because these are the frequencies that are associated with human speech. So we're going to have more, you know, fine discrimination, you know, more, more neurons that can um, uh, selectively respond to fine frequency discriminations between the range of frequencies that are associated with human speech. And we're going to have more cortical area. You know, remember the temporal lobe processes auditory information. More areas in the auditory uh, cortex that are uh, responsive to sounds within that 500 to 5,000 hertz range than you do at the very high, you know, end of things. Um, so um, basically, uh, this homuncular organization is a principle of you know all sensory systems.